Hi, I'm Nicole and this is The Crafty Tinkerer. I figured I'd do an introductory video. I've been watching a lot of knitting vlogs on YouTube and um, decided it looked like a lot of fun. So I thought, what the heck? I'm gonna give it a go and see what happens. Pretty soon I'd like to start my first sweater project. So I figured, well, if nothing else, at least I'll chronicle how the journey goes. I've been doing lots of hats this year. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I live in the Hudson Valley in New York, and I grew up here, moved to Vermont for a little while, and then we moved back a few years ago. I had never heard of the Rhinebeck New York Sheep and Wool Festival until I lived in Vermont, <laughs> ironically. Um, so I did not learn how to knit when I was young. It's something that I taught myself by watching videos as an adult. No one in my family knit or crocheted. Um, my grandmother did some sewing, but not when, not by the time I was old enough to really pay attention. She really didn't teach me that. So I taught myself how to sew when I was um, pregnant for my son and our daughter was not quite two yet. And then I decided, <laughs> oh, well, you know, maybe knitting will be some fun. So for Christmas of 2010, my husband bought me some clover bamboo circular knitting needles and I tried to teach myself how to knit. I asked him for bamboo because I had heard that, you know, it's easier for beginners, the stitches don't slip. Um, and that's very true, they don't, but I just couldn't get it. And I went to a friend's house and she's a knitter and she looked at my stitches and said, Nicole, you've got to lighten up a little bit. This, these stitches are too tight. You're not able to get the needle in to make a second row because your stitches are too tight. Just cast on, you know, a little bit more loosely and try to relax while you're knitting. So I tried and I failed. And I put away my knitting supplies for about seven years. And then in January of 2017, I decided to make a super cat hat. Um, it's a free pattern available on Ravelry and I downloaded it and made two of them. My daughter has one. She's, she claimed the first one I made and she loves it even though the ribbing isn't aligned. I messed up my knits and pearls somewhere. So the bottom has knit, pearl, knit, pearl, and then above has pearl, knit, pearl, knit. <laughs> but this is the first project I really felt like, okay, I can do this, you know? So then I didn't pick up knitting again for another year. Um, a friend of mine sent some yarn. She was clearing out some of her yarn stash and she sent some Jameson and Smith and JNS Shetland wool um, to me because she was making something called a Fair Isle Fisherman's Cap and she thought that I would enjoy it. And so she sent the yarn along and she hooked me up with the Facebook group because that's where you have to go to buy the pattern. Um, the pattern is more of a recipe done by Anne Sinclair. And they use the money for the pattern to like buy new windows for the building and such. So it's a good cause. Um, but I joined the group and they were hosting a kep along during that period of time. And so I decided to give it a go. So January, 2018, I cast on my first 
Fair Isle Fisherman's Cap. And I can't stop making these. Um, this first one, you know, I it took me about two weeks to do. The motifs are a little crooked because somewhere along the way I lost the pattern. Um, you know, the motifs that I was working with, I like messed them up in different rows. So it's a little wonky, but I love it. So the second cap I did, I made for my mother and here's a confession, I don't swatch. And I didn't measure my mother's head. I wanted it to be a surprise for her but it turned out to be way too large. She put it on and it came down to about here and she just, she just couldn't wear it. So I stuck it in the washing machine and felted it and it came out a little bit smaller, but you know, I put that one in the closet. And then the third one I did had tulips it was like a spring theme now if you would like to view these projects i don't have these hats because i've given them away um, you can check out my projects on my ravelry page it's um the crafty tinkerer as well so that third cap is where i decided that i was going to try a different crown pattern and I went and I saw uh, Mary Rose, um, R-O-W-E, Rowe, her book for Tams. And so for most of my caps now, I use Tam crown patterns. Um, and so I did that, but I had never seen a Tam crown pattern before. And I read the book, but I didn't quite grasp the fact that that little extra row on the side is also a knit stitch. So I skipped it and that hat <laughs> came out, you know, sort of shuffled up. The motif on the crown came out shuffled up, but I learned and I went on to the next one and I've done a bunch. Um, I did a pug cap for one of our neighbors, um, she has a pug who we dog sit and we have two pugs. So I thought that would be a nice gift for her. Um, but again, forgot to ask her for her head measurement. So it's too small. So the second cap that I did that was too big for my mother, I actually switched it out with my neighbor and she, is now the owner of that larger cap and I have the pug cap here. And for the Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool Festival this year, because I don't knit sweaters yet, I decided to do a cap for myself. And fall in New York is so beautiful. We have all the maple trees, the oak leaves turn colors. I mean, it's just really gorgeous. But I focused on the maple leaf in my hat. Um, I found that motif somewhere on Google and decided to go with it. And then the smaller motifs are probably from Alice Starmore's book of Fair Isle Knits. Um, I use that, I think that's what it's called. Alice Starmore's Fair Isle Book of Knitting, maybe. Um, that's the book that I use mostly for the motifs or on the Fair Isle Fisherman's Kep Facebook group, they have put in their files section a chart so that you can make your own, like a, a graph, a piece of graph paper, and you can draw your own motifs on there. So that's the pug cap. I couldn't find a pug face that quite fit with the amount of stitches that I wanted to do, so I drew that one myself. Um, and I do that sometimes when I'm just looking for something slightly different. I've always um, preferred to be a little bit different. I like, I've always, you know, had a sense of style that was a little 
off the beaten path. So that sort of continues with my knitting now. I like things that not everyone else has, so I'll change them up a little bit or I'll make my own. Uh, that is what I'm looking to do with my sweater that I'm planning to knit as well. I purchased the Strange Brew pattern by Tin Can Knits from Ravelry. My first sweater will be Strange Brew. Um, I have yet to figure out which motifs I'm going to do, but that'll be happening soon. So I have another couple of hats here. I did one for my son for Christmas um, in his favorite color blue. And you'll see how it has these X's and the X's with the squares. I kind of gravitate towards that patterning and I like the snowflakes or I think they're called Norwegian roses. Norwegian flowers um, so those are you know I, I really do enjoy charting those up um, and I made myself one in purple this one though I lined with alpaca that I bought at the Rhinebeck New York sheep and wool festival this past October for the brim of my hat I think the colorway was silver but I don't have the tag for that anymore um, the alpaca comes from a touch of twist, which is out of New York State. I know, I can't remember if it's Patterson, uh, Pattersonville, New York. So, and it was so soft. I could not resist buying this when I was there. Um, and I also put that as the brim for my husband's cap which is national lampoons christmas vacation theme my sons i lined with a sock yarn i cannot remember which brand it is um i think though that it's a malabrigo but i'm not a hundred percent certain so if you recognize the colorway and you'd like to just leave a comment um i would appreciate that because you know, when I first started knitting, I threw away the tags for, <laughs> for some of the yarns that I had because I wasn't keeping records on Ravelry and I didn't think it was that important. So I just, you know, chucked them. I would mix, actually in my first cap, I used that same colorway um, for the inside because the wool felt itchy to me. So I thought, oh, well, you know, merino sock yarn will be great on the forehead but it doesn't quite go together the same way so live and learn that's what that is what knitting is for me i um don't really like following a pattern to a t i like to mix it up a little bit and like i said make it different so Sometimes it's the harder way around. I'm sometimes trying to reinvent the wheel, but that's what makes it fun for me. So I don't think I'm gonna change. <laughs> I tried to follow a couple of different patterns and you know, I always end up changing things a little bit here and a little bit there. I've done a pair of mittens. I've done a couple pairs of socks um, that I took from like three different patterns. So that's how I discovered Arne and Carlos though, who I love, I love watching them um, because I watched their easiest sock in the world video and learned how to do an afterthought heel for my socks. The heel was the part that scared me the most um, and it was fairly easy uh, and it went well. My, I just need to get a, uh, sock measuring thing. I can't remember what they're called now because they always come out about an inch shorter than I think they're going to. So, and I'm making like shorty socks. I like ankle socks. So that's another future endeavor. Um, and I've made a lot of Arne and Carlos's birds. I was able to get their field guide to knitted birds out of our local library system. 
and I've probably made 15 of their birds. Um, I've only done one scarf so far though, but I just think they are the cutest. And they make, you know, you can hang them up. I've actually put some of mine in plants around the house and I have people come over and say, oh, that's so cute, where did you get it? So they are just the most adorable little thing. I think some people in my family may be getting them for Christmas this year. So that's pretty much my introduction. I hope that some of you will follow along with me. If you're interested in seeing my adventures and making my first sweater, which I'm aiming to have done by October for Rhinebeck, because last year I only got in a hat. Um, please subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna try to make videos, you know, maybe once a week, maybe once every two weeks. We'll see how it goes. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to comment. Have a good day.